In this video, I describe how a careful examination of Minoan art can solve the puzzle of Minoan origins. According to some previous theories, the Minoans were Indo-Iranians, Near Easterners, Egyptians, Fulani, or came from somewhere else. All of these theories are too simplistic because they assume that the Minoans were from one place. As we will see, the story is more complex. We are looking for a theory that is consistent with the archaeological record. The Knossos Palace was excavated by Sir Arthur Evans, who found three major layers in Minoan chronology. The early Minoan layer from around 3000 to 2200 BC, the middle Minoan layer from 2200 to 1500 BC, and the late Minoan layer from 1500 to 1000 BC. Evans based his chronology on major events that he noticed in each layer. Some of these are listed in the second column here. Evans was particularly interested in different writings that were noticed in different layers. The major cultural transformations that took place in early Minoan times were the development of metalworking and finer art carvings. In the Middle Minoan period, palaces were built at various major sites shown here and Cretan hieroglyphic writing was introduced. In 1700 BC, there was a major earthquake after which the palaces had to be rebuilt and Linear A was introduced. All of these palaces have major archives of Linear A tablets. In the late Minoan period, all of the palaces were burnt except Knossos. Later in this period, the Linear B writing was introduced. In 1952, Michael Ventris proved that Linear B is an early form of Greek. Now let me put the island of Crete into a geographic context. Here we see the Fertile Crescent, which is where agriculture started around 9000 BC. Agriculture spread from the Fertile Crescent to southeastern Europe, which is roughly the area which is called Old Europe by archaeologists. Sometimes it is more narrowly defined and restricted to the Danube basin, but we will take a broader view here and even include Western Anatolia. Old Europe was a Neolithic culture with some Chalcolithic spots towards the end of the period. According to Maria Gimbutas, the old European culture ended after the migration of Indo-Europeans from the Pontic Steppe around 3000 BC. The study of art motifs can help us to guess the language of Linear A. As this diagram shows, in the early Minoan, middle Minoan, and late Minoan times, 
different art motifs were introduced. We can identify the place of origin of any art motif as the region X where it appears earliest. Now, if region X has an unknown language spoken there, then we can try to check if this motif survives to a later time when the language can be identified. Suppose we know that the motif survived in region X to the present time and currently language L is spoken there. Then it's reasonable to suppose that a Proto-L language was spoken in region X in Minoan times. Hence, it is also logical that the Proto-L language was transmitted to Crete together with the art motif during Middle Minoan times. Moreover, it is also probable that the underlying language of linear A is Proto-L. A motif is a regularly co-occurring set of features with a common meaning. We could identify 20 different motifs in the journal article shown at the bottom. I will give some examples of these motifs in the next few slides. People living in Europe noticed long ago that the sun makes smaller and smaller half circles in the sky every day, from the summer solstice to the winter solstice. Then the sun starts to make bigger and bigger half circles every day, from the winter solstice to the summer solstice. This movement of the sun was perceived as a spiral movement. This is the explanation for the sun motif, which is defined as a simple spiral or a complex spiral that is central, usually enclosed in a circle, and has various emanations from its center in the form of parallel lines or trees. The features that I mention here are numbered and put in parentheses. The sun motif can be found at the Neolithic Diminisite in the middle Minoan Voro and then at Magyar Sombatva in the 20th century. The starfish motif consists of a simple spiral or concentric circles that is central and has emanations from its center that look like wheat or some grain. This motif occurs in the Ubaid period of Ur, in the Neolithic sites of Troy and Turdash, in the early Minoan Pyrgos, and in the 20th century at Magyar Sombatva. The dragon motif is a set of simple spirals arranged in a pair, and the dragon or snake between which there is usually a tree. This motif occurs on a Scythian earring in late Minoan Crete and at Chopron in the 13th century. The embroidery motif consists of complex spirals that connect with their left and right or above and below neighbors and fill in the entire space. This motif occurs in the Neolithic site of Butmir, in the Middle Minoan site of Platanus, 
and at the beginning of the 20th century, a tooth comes The vine motif consists of a set of simple spirals that are connected by a vine that alternatively swirls left and right and having the centers a rosette or some other flower. This is found at Certum Lake, in 4th century BC Scythian site, at Isopata in late Minoan times, and at Chicxomeo recently. The crown motif consists of a set of simple spirals that are arranged in a row and stem from a short line and appear as a headdress. This is found on a Scythian stag at Knossos in late Minoan times and at San Nicolao Mare in the 8th century. The fertility motif consists of simple spirals, with at least one pair symmetrically arranged and joined with a cross-hedged diamond shape between them. This ancient motif appears at the Neolithic Cucuteni site at 4800 BC. The diamond is an extension of the pubic triangle, and as Maria Gimbutas explains, Often the spirals on the left and the right side that are frequently found on similar Cucuteni figures denote the ovaries. This motif appears at Zakros in Middle Minoan times and at Zemplin Ogard in the 10th century. And interestingly, the Mori people preserve their native religion to the present day and use this as a religious symbol. A variation of the fertility motif is where the diamond has been extended to a bigger crosshead shape which occurs in Mycene and also on an embroidery at Udvarhei. The world motif consists of simple spirals that have a circular arrangement and have several parallel lines extending from each spiral. The advanced forms of this motif also usually have in the center of the circle of spirals a rosette or some other flower. This occurs at Varna at Middle Minoan Aegina and the 20th century Hungary. The snake goddess motif consists of a set of simple spirals in the form of a dragon, serpent or snake and a person without hands. This occurs at the Neolithic site of Hasilar from about 6000 BC on a pottery depicting a snake goddess. Note that instead of legs, there are spirals. The motif recurs at Troy, in Neolithic Budapest, early Minoan Kumasa, and recently at Korond. The sacrifice motif consists of a bull or a cow and a cross within a bull horn. This appears in the Neolithic site at Kukuteni on a vase, at Middle Minoan Nossos, and recently in Korond. Although the jock from Korond lacks the bull horn, it is a similarity that the cross appears on the neck of the pot here also. Many motifs were derived from nature. This Neolithic pot from Iran 
was probably inspired by a similar rocky creek. The water motif consists of dotted and hatched triangles with alternating upward and downward orientation. This occurs not only in Iran, but also in Neolithic Butmir, in the corded ware culture, early Minoan Gnosis, and at Page in the 20th century. A variation of the water motif that occurs in old European sites is where the dotted triangles are replaced by single dots or small circles. This can be seen on the handle of a jug from the Nagyrev culture at Siget and Miklos, on the middle Minoan fresco, and even today in Conti art. The Minoan and the Conti examples share the blue color for the depiction of this motif. The Conti are considered a native people of northwest Siberia. There are fewer than 10,000 native speakers of the Conti language. The well motif consists of dotted triangles with upward and downward orientation or diamonds around the square and a cross within the square in the form of staircases. The well motif developed from the previous water motif variant and occurs in the Najrev culture at Middle Minoan Nossos. Note the animals around the well. They are probably there to drink some water. Interestingly, this motif also occurs among the Sami people in Finland, as can be seen on this carved knife handle. Here we can also see the dotted triangles going all around this handle and an animal in the center. The serrated leaf motif is defined by dotted contours of objects. This occurs in Anatolia, in Carduna, and Mochlos in early Minoan times. The divided sun motif contains a dividing line with a dot on each side and a half a sun on the left and half a sun on the right. Together the two halves form a circular center with straight lines emanating from it. This can be found at Kukuteni, at Middle Minoan Nossos, and at Shomoy. The word tree motif contains a center with three branch emanations from it, two dividing lines in the form of three branches from the center with a mini world in each quarter. And there is the sun perching on a tree branch and non tree dwelling animals on the branches. This motif appears at the Najrev culture. This figure is like a ladder on which it is possible to go from the earth to the sky. A more elaborate version of this word tree is found at the middle Minoan Psycro cave. In both the Najrev and the Minoan examples, the tree branches are like bull horns, and the Hungarian example in the 20th century 
also shows balls on both main branches of the tree. The altar motif has a star, sun, or rosette below an altar, and an altar which has bull horns on it, or its shape imitates bull horns. This already occurs at the Neolithic site of Kukuteni, which shows a shrine with two bulls. And in the center of the shrine, there is a sun. The same motif appears on a seal at the Idean cave in Middle Minoan times. Note the star below the altar and at a bracketate in Hungary with two rosettes below the altar. The dock vessel motif is a vessel in the shape of a dock with a spout at the tail feather. This can be more closed on the top, like the Vincha example, or more open, like the examples at Troy and Middle Minoan Crete. Now we just list all the common features that were used to define the above motifs. A complete list can be found in the journal paper. Here are some more of those features. There are 20 main features and 35 total features when all the subcases are considered. This table lists which features each item contains. A check mark indicates that an artifact contains a feature. We define the similarity measure for two motifs as the number of common features that they contain. For example, the two plates shown here, labeled 1A and 1C in the journal paper, have a similarity of 5 because they both contain the following features. They have a simple spiral that is central, is enclosed in a circle, and the circle has emanations from its center in the form of straight, parallel lines and a zigzag. We also define the distance measure for two motifs as n minus their similarity, where n is the total number of features used. The distance measure is shown to be a mathematical metric in the journal paper. The proof is based on showing that it satisfies the following properties. Identity of indiscernibles, symmetry, and triangle inequality. After this, a similarity matrix can be built for the artifacts as is shown here. We highlight those entries in the similarity matrix which have a similarity measure of 3 or higher. Generally, these high values occur along the diagonal. In summary, we can see the following occurrence of motifs. There is a set of motifs that start from the Fertile Crescent, continue in Old Europe, and first appear among the Minoans in the early Minoan period. There is another set of motifs that originate in Old Europe, and first appear in Crete in the Middle Minoan period. Finally, there is a set of motifs which likely originate from the Pontic Steppe, and these appear in the late Minoan period. These results can be also summarized in a motif inheritance diagram as shown here. 
these results suggest the following more detailed origin of the Minoans. First, from the Fertile Crescent, agriculture spread into both Crete and the rest of southeastern Europe. forming Neolithic Crete and the core of the old European culture. Later groups of migrants could have arrived at Crete from other areas of the Fertile Crescent. Together with the Neolithic population, they have established the early Minoan culture. Later, some old Europeans moved to Crete and they established the Middle Minoan culture. Finally, from the Pontic Steppe, some Indo-European groups arrived at Crete and other areas of Europe. These groups formed the late Minoan culture in Crete and the Mycenaean culture in mainland Greece. Some archaeologists suppose that the Mycenaeans invaded Crete and established the late Minoan culture. The data that we have cannot distinguish between these last two scenarios. The old European culture seems to survive today primarily in Finno-Ugric cultures. Grover Kronz suggested that the Proto-Finno-Ugric people had a homeland in the Danube Basin and many of them including the ancestors of the Conti, Mari and Sami migrated from that homeland to their present locations. The common motifs that we found support Kranz's hypothesis. This suggests that the underlying language of Linear A is a Finno-Ugric language. For a decipherment of Linear A and Cretan hieroglyphs in a Finno-Ugric language, please see my other publications and videos. Thank you for listening.